Very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Capitol Hill on this Thursday, the end of the first parliamentary sitting week of this fortnight. We'll get straight into it. And the now former Director General of ASIO, Duncan Lewis, reckons his agency is under the pump. The reason being the growing threat of foreign interference and espionage and the demands being thrust upon ASIO to provide advice and support on the issue. Mr Lewis, who has since retired from the service, issued his warning in ASIO's annual report, which was released yesterday. He says it's not as simple as moving resources from counter-terror operations into espionage because the terror threat hasn't disappeared. Labor argues Mr Lewis's comments should set off alarm bells in government ranks, but Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton says ASIO's funding is adequate. We've made the point before that the ASIO funding goes up every year. Now, when Labor was in power, they ripped money out of ASIO. Uh, they took staff out of ASIO, they took staff out of uh, Border Force or then Customs, uh, they took 700, over $700 million uh, out, of, uh, border, out of customs and border protection. Uh, they took money out of the Australian Federal Police. We've put money back in uh, and we'll continue to put money back in. And we can only do that because we manage the economy and the budget well. And if you're in a situation where Labor was, they ran out of money, they couldn't put money uh, into medicines, they stopped listings, they stopped putting money into the Federal Police. In fact, they pulled it out including out of ASIO, and under this government, we've been able to put more money in so each year. So we, we, we'll put mon more money into ASIO, uh, into our agencies uh, each year, and that's what you would expect from this Beyond government. Inflation. And uh, 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 we, we will put more money in each year, and as I say, the staffing numbers uh, grow each year. And, and, and look, every agency head across the Commonwealth wants more money into their agency, and every minister wants more money uh, into uh, their departments and their agencies. Well, the story today deals with the drought and a payment that it's available to farmers doing it tough called the Farm Household Allowance. It's meant to support people living on the land while they're struggling to make ends meet, but it is limited to a four-year period. When farmers reach that limit, they'll now be eligible for a one-off payment worth $13,000 for families and $7,500 for individuals. It's the fourth lot of changes to the Farm Household Allowance announced in the last year, and while there are more than 20,000 farmers farmers that are eligible for the allowance, fewer than 7,000 currently receive the fortnightly payments, despite much of the country still experiencing drought. Because of when the payment was started about four years ago, anyone that's come off the payment since uh, the 1st of July this year will be eligible to apply for the one-off payment. Um, this payment is a hardship payment. It is not a drought payment, uh, the farm household allowance. but uh, so. So it is not just drought affected farmers who've been accessing this. We've paid out over $350 million over the last four years to farmers doing it tough. Yeah. Many, many, many of them have come off the payment prior to their four years because it's coupled with significant financial advice. Farmers are going to have to sit down and talk with the Rural Financial Councillor about what are their plans for the future? How do they make uh, their business sustainable? Do they need to think about succession planning? Do they need to sell up and do something else? Or what changes and system changes can they make on farm to actually ensure they're sustainably farming going forward? Now, despite that sales pitch from the Agriculture Minister, Labor isn't convinced the new payment is enough. What we know is that already 600 farming families have, been, have had their payment cut off and by Christmas, that's more likely to be 1,100 farming families, almost double the number which have already been taken off. It is a callous act, in fact, the greatest act of bastardry by any government in the history of the Federation, to be taking our most desperate, drought-stricken farming families off the modern, modest farm household allowance payment. And it won't help very much to, be, to have that payment extended just six months. Well, joining me for our Thursday panel to discuss those issues and a few other things kicking around, Liberal MP for the Victorian seat of Goldstein, Tim Wilson. Welcome to you. Thanks for having me. And Labor MP for the Victorian seat as well of Jagger Jagger, Kate Thwaites. Welcome. Hi, Matt. Tim Wilson, if I could start with you and go to ASIO first. Peter Dutton has effectively dismissed Duncan Lewis uh, there by saying that his resources are under strain because of this growing threat of foreign interference and espionage. You sit on the PJCIS, you know what the workload of the agency is. 
What's your interpretation of what Duncan Lewis had to say? Well, firstly, I don't agree with your assessment of uh, what the Minister said. What the Minister said is we're very mindful of the reality and the pressures that are on uh, intelligence agencies and particularly the growing and expanding responsibilities, particularly related to foreign interference, and we've passed legislation around that. And as you've made the point, uh, one of the problems we've had is dealing with the money that was cut out of it by the Labor Party when they were in government. We've um, provided funding, additional funding, and it continues to go up. And uh, we'll continue to look through all of these proposals that come out uh, as part of an ongoing assessment about our capacity of intelligent agencies. But we back them 100%. We want them to do their job, and that's why we're providing the resources to do so. It's a pretty convenient argument to say that Labor took money out of the uh, agencies when you have been, or well, not you personally, but the Coalition has been in uh, government now for some six years. You have had well, a period of the, time where you can put that money back in. Why it definitely, it definitely, well, we, we, that's why we have provided additional resources and funding, and that's, I mean, the brutal reality is that's part of the legacy, and it actually takes a long time to undo that legacy, but because we're running a strong budget um, surplus and we're going to be in a position uh, that will enable us to review these matters as part of the budget process next year. So why would Duncan Lewis say that uh, the agency is under pressure if the funding is adequate? Well, uh, there will always be pressure on these agencies because of the nature and the scale and the breadth of the challenges that we are facing. Um, and they change regularly uh, and they evolve regularly. And so he's rightly pointing out the challenges intelligence agencies have. have. Uh, it's good to bring it to the public attention. Um, and what we've got to do is review it as part of ordinary government processes, budgetary as well as legislative, so that we can protect Australians. And that's what this government is doing. Kate Waits, Peter Dutton says that every government agency or department is always wanting more cash in its coffers. It's their prerogative to do so. Christina Keneally, your uh, Home Affairs spokeswoman, says that this should be ringing alarm bells within government ranks. Is Labor advocating for some sort of blank cheque to be written to our intelligence agencies here? Of course we're not advocating for a blank cheque, but we are saying this is a serious warning from ASIO. They are saying they need extra money to do their job properly. Now, I sit in the House of Reps day after day and I hear this government ask itself questions about who can keep this country safe, and they tell us they're the ones who can keep this country safe. We're hearing from the Director General of ASIO that he does not have enough money to do what he thinks needs to be done to keep this, government, uh, to keep this country safe. The government needs to take that seriously. Instead, all they're doing is talking about labour. They've been the government for six years, they need to get on with, with funding ASIO. You heard some of Tim Wilson's criticism there that uh, when Labor was in power it was, uh, according to the Coalition, taking money out of our law enforcement agencies. How do you respond to that? Well, what a cop out. It's been six years. That, that's not an argument. So what, is there any evidence beyond what Duncan Lewis is saying here that you have heard anecdotally or at least the party has heard that ASIO is struggling to do its job here? Well, I think, again, the fact that the, the Director General put this in the annual report, a very public place, he's not hiding it. Um, it, it is clear evidence that he's asking for extra support for the work that ASIO needs to do. We'll move on to the issue of the drought because of that. that is an ongoing concern to many people right around the country. Tim Wilson, you heard Joel Fitzgibbon uh, there just before you came on saying that the government allowing farmers to come off the farm household allowance, uh, come off that welfare payment is an act of political bastardry. Is this new payment just window dressing when the coalition doesn't have a coherent drought policy? Well, well firstly, I don't accept that framing at all and I think the bastardry is making politics out of a very serious drought and the livelihoods uh, that are being impacted by it and the sustainability of our farming communities. Um, one of the reasons why we're able to announce new payments today is because we've been running a strong budget position, managing the finance as well, so we can actually help those people who need assistance. And that's the focus of the government as part of a $7 billion drought assistance and relief package. Um, so we have farmers who need, uh, confront challenges around uh, uh, investing in their business, particularly at a time uh, when they're experiencing um, uh, ex ex an extreme circumstance. Uh, we need them to be investing in those and being able to make their choices about their future. Um, it's important for our food security. It's important for rural economies uh, and, of course, the whole of the nation. And I think where, no matter whether people are in the city or, or in rural and regional areas, people are very mindful of that. And that's why we're taking it as seriously as we are. And that's why this politics is so disappointing. How seriously are you taking it when you face criticism that 
uh, the coalition is just putting forward these paltry payments rather than actually looking towards long-term planning, looking towards building resilience and actually dealing with climate change, which is the key driver as to why drought is happening. Well, but this is just an absolute fiction that we're not doing this. I mean, I'm not sure if you saw on Sunday, uh, the uh, Prime Minister was standing right next to the Premier of New South Wales to uh, announce commitments towards uh, new dams being built in New South Wales. That's part of a resilience strategy. Uh, we have a comprehensive climate pol climate change policy being implemented right now as part of reinvesting in Snowy 2.0 so that we have um, more renewable energy into the grid, connecting more of the surplus energy from Tasmania, from hydroelectric power to the grid um, as part of, we have national vehicle strategy, we have one around uh, making sure that we reduce the emissions profile of uh, Australian companies so they're competitive internationally. So we've actually got a full suite of measures to deal with resilience, helping people in the immediate sense around the challenge they face with the drought, resilience and trying to build the stock of the country, particularly around water management, because that's critical to Australia's future, and long-term policies being implemented right now about reducing our greenhouse gas footprint. Kate Thwaites, uh, Joel Fitzgibbon was quite passionate in his press conference earlier today, but the bottom line is the coalition can't make it rain. How much of the Labor's criticism of their approach here is political point scoring as opposed to uh, actually working in a cooperative fashion? I think hiding behind suggesting that this is um, political point scoring to hide the fact that nothing's happened, that we've had six years, no dams built, We've had six years and people are still struggling. This is not Labor saying this. This is farmers, this is people in these communities saying they are struggling and they are not getting the help they need. Now to hide behind and, and say this is just some kind of political argument, that's not the case. That's what Labor is hearing from people who are feeling this directly. And that's what Joel was reflecting. And he's been very upfront that we are happy to work with the government on this. We're happy to convene a task force to do what needs to be done. But um, really, again, I, I make the point, they're the government. Um, it is up to them to, to get on with the job and at the moment they're just not doing it. Joel Fitzgibbon is effectively saying that farmers shouldn't go off welfare at all. They shouldn't go off this farm household allowance at all. Where does that money come from? Well, again, it comes from the government making decisions about how it supports farmers into the long term. And that is a serious thing. This drought has been going on for a long time. Um, you, you made the point about what is the government doing on the long term. And again, I make the point that we have climate change, uh, we have emissions going up. So this isn't a government that is taking this challenge seriously, and it should be. Can we just ask, you said that four years isn't long enough. OK, so what, is five years long enough, six years long enough, seven years? When, when does... Are you wait, suggesting wait, that you well, just cut farmers off? No, what, no, not what, at all. What happens but, but, what, but what I'm saying is there's well, I'm, obviously I'm a limitation. You, what happens to them? No, no, but I'm asking you. You say four years is fine. I'll, I'll accept that and say that you think it should be longer. Tell me what's the time frame that you think it should be longer? I'm saying we need to support farmers. Now, when are you saying okay, you want so, to cut them off? No, no. Well, that's why we announced today $13,500 for uh, our families as well. So, sorry, $13,000 families and $7,500 for individuals uh, to assist. But I can give a clear answer. Why can't you? Because I'm asking you, when are you saying you want to cut farmers off? When well, are you saying that we're not, so, you're not supporting But you're them? saying that you want benefits to go on in perpetuity. You're not I'm saying we should support day. farmers. Well, exactly. You're the government, Tim. It's I not know. my job to and set a date for you. that's why we announced the funding today. But it would have been... If you're going to attack and criticise a comprehensive package to provide assistance and support to Australian farmers, which is what we're doing... What we're hearing from farmers you're is it's not comprehensive. It's not what they think they need. It's just empty words. OK, well, we might leave that one there because I know it is a very emotive topic that we are going to hear much more about. I do want to pick up on one thing that has moved within Labor's policy stance uh, in the last uh, few hours and that is of course the fact that the party now seems to be warming towards these free trade agreements with Indonesia, Peru and Hong Kong. There are a series of bargaining positions that you are now putting forward to the government but the, the, the hint does seem to be that even if the government doesn't move on things like labour market testing on ISDS clauses that Labor is going to support these positions. Is it just another policy area where Labor is going to back down in the same way it did on income tax on national security legislation? Absolutely not. So I think that the way you've just set this out shows you what a comprehensive and, and serious discussion Labor is having about this. And we want to make sure that these agreements deliver on what they should. They should deliver Australian jobs and they should deliver the opportunity for our businesses to be able to invest in the countries that we're making trade agreements with. It does so, seem to be putting you on a collision course with the union movement, though. The ETU in your home state of Victoria has already tweeted having a crack at Anthony Albanese for this shift 
shift in position? We're working really closely and discussing with the union mo movement throughout this discussion um, about where our position is. So no, I don't think it's a collision course. I think we're very clear that we are um, standing up for jobs and we will continue to be standing up for jobs, uh, including through um, making sure that the way the government implements these agreements is focused on that. Tim Wilson, we are running out of time, but I do want to ask you though, uh, are, there, are you dismissing, is the Coalition dismissing the concerns that people would have that they might be undercut in the jobs market when these sort of free trade deals come through, through cheap labour coming in from countries like Indonesia? Well, I don't accept that framing. I mean, the realities of our free trade agreements are always focused um, primarily on increasing the amount and opportunities for our, our uh, businesses to export into our target markets. So when you've got countries like Indonesia or um, our markets like Hong Kong, we have the opportunity to increase the opportunities for jobs being created in Australia here. We have always been a nation, always been a nation, where we have uh, produced more than we have been able to consume direct, directly. That's one of the reasons why we're one of the most prosperous nations in the world. Uh, and the more we grow our economy, the more we create the opportunity for jobs here, the more we're in a better position uh, to grow the economy to the benefit of everybody. Well, Tim Wilson and Kate Thwaites, we must release you back into the wild so you can make question time in time. We thank you both for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks.